if you spend enough time on any project that you care about, the project will much more likely succeed. Uh, that sounds so simple, but the reason I'm bringing it up is because I've noticed after coaching many entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, small business owners since 2009 is when I started doing it. I noticed this recurring issue is that a lot of people simply aren't spending enough time on the right actions to grow their business. Uh, and so it's no wonder that their business isn't growing. They're not getting enough clients. Uh, they're not getting enough uh, systems that are going to support them um, month after month, year after year for their income and their um, client stability, the, uh, the fact that they can continue their business. So it is simply, if you could say it this way, a matter of spending enough time on the right actions. Now you might say, well, well fine, George, but what are the right actions? <laughs> so I have put below this video, uh, depending on where you're watching and maybe above, there is a link to a blog post where I outline the eight practices of authentic business and how much time I recommend spending for each of the eight practices per week. And if you add up the, the time that I recommend in the blog post, it adds up to something around 10 hours per week uh, of focused work. Now, um, yeah, so... I'm guessing that most of you can carve out 10 hours per week to work on your business. Uh, most of us are probably spending way more than that and not getting the kind of results that we want because, as I said, you're probably not spending the time on, on, the, action, on the most productive actions, which again, if you look below on the blog post, you'll, you'll see what they are. Now, what I want to talk about in this video is um, sort of the... The, the psychology or the mindset background about why people aren't spending the time on it, why you might be blocked or hindered by spending enough time on it. Number one is that you probably, most of us come from a background where we worked for somebody else, worked for a boss, a company, an organization. And the boss or the, or even school, you know, going to school, the time is structured for you. Right, like in school, you you know maybe have period one, period two, period three, or um, yeah, it, that's how most schools work. And then you go to you start working for a business or company or organization, and they're like, okay, come in at nine o'clock. You can leave at five. And during the, this time, I want you to do X, Y, and Z. Okay, so if you don't structure your time, eventually someone is going to have to structure it for you. And so it's up to you how much autonomy you want. So the irony is that if you don't uh, really practice uh, creating your uh, creating or following your own structure that is productive, that is valuable, so that when people are happy to pay you money, then other people will structure it for you because you will have to get a job, and that's there's something wrong with getting a job. It's just less autonomy, less freedom uh, of doing whatever you want to do. But the irony, of course, is that as a business owner, you have to create your own lack of freedom <laughs> for a time before you can create more freedom. It's kind of like learning any skill. You know, when you first, let's say you start to learn how to play the piano, right? You, you can't just go, gosh, I'm, I'm going to play the piano. I'm going to play it with freedom and, and, and still have it be beautiful or have it be, have it sound the way I want. Probably not. In the beginning of learning a play, a musical instrument, you have to you have to structure your lack of freedom. You have to structure your own uh, disciplined um, sort of like, okay, we're going to practice the scales. I know it's boring, but we have to practice the scales to get our fingers and our arms and our ability, hand-eye coordination, to be able to then use that hand-eye coordination to play beautiful pieces of music. But and to learn the musical theory and all that. But all that is creating a structure. And you probably had a, you know, if you learn mu music, you had a music teacher give you that structure. If you learn by yourself, you know that you have to create your own structure of practice. Same thing with business. You think you're going to come into your own business and great, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a business owner now. I'm a solopreneur. I get to do whatever I want. 
and then what happens? You don't have enough clients, et cetera. You don't, you can't describe your work and you don't have a, a, an audience who want to buy from you because you need to create the structure of practicing your scales. In this case, it's things like creating content and announcing your offers, uh, you know, tweaking your offers based on market research and alignment of your prospective clients and all that, all that stuff, which again, I talk about in the blog post related to this video, but let me first, again, number one, point number one is, are you creating a structure that temporarily limits your freedom? You have to understand, like, you have to really sit with that and go, do I understand that I am temporarily limiting my freedom, my hippie nature uh, to just do whatever I want, whenever I want? Do I understand that I have to limit myself? Otherwise, someone I go get a job and someone limits it for me. But as a, a free to practice my free will as as a as a as a human being that's self liberated, can I therefore create the structure as an artist creates a structure on a canvas to say, "All right, I, I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint all over the walls. No, I'm going to paint on this canvas to create a beautiful work of art." Your time calendar is your canvas for the beautiful work of art of your of how you spend your time of, of your life so are you doing that number one number two, like be emotionally you know emotionally accepting of lack of freedom that you create for yourself knowing that it's in service to a greater freedom in the future much greater like now for example because i've I've done the lack of freedom for years with, with myself. I now have so much more freedom because gratefully I have an audience now who are much more likely to buy from me and I can now create whatever I want, structure my time much more than before. And also the, the, the discipline I had for years has given me the skills of discipline that even though I can do whatever I want, I still create the structures that I know are effective to launch certain things, projects. So number one, I don't know of any way around learning discipline other than you have to structure it for yourself if you don't want someone else to structure it for you. You might say, well, George, isn't that what a business coach like you is supposed to do? Tell me what to do. Give me a structure, George, and I will follow it with accountability. Sure, I have done that with clients for many years, but I still, I'm still, I'm quite uncomfortable with that because I'm like, if the more you listen to me tell you exactly what to do and you do it, the less autonomy you're actually practicing for yourself, the less authentic of a business you're going to have. So eventually to have an authentic business means you have to emotionally accept the lack of freedom. But guess what? It's not so bad. Well, it's not, it's not the worst because you're the one who decide to create the lack of freedom, not someone else imposing it on you. You gently impose it on yourself, and at least you know that it's my choice. So it's like there's, a, there's an underlying freedom and that you choose to create the lack of freedom. The freedom is you choose to create the lack of freedom. Now, let me talk about another point, and I'll, I'll end here. Um, a funny, sto funny quick story. I, this video is going to be shorter than most of my Facebook Live videos because when, as I was starting to create this video, my cat started to, <laughs> to kind of cough out a hairball and so i had to go and <laughs> try to catch it before because she does a certain you know thing and then and i try to catch it and finally i couldn't catch it clean up so it took me like an extra five to seven minutes that ate into this video of now but I st i'm still here anyway do you see what i mean like i still respect the structure i've created for myself i respect it because i know that it creates a certain regularity that produces amazing results um, and that gives me practice for discipline because discipline is a continued practice. It's not a one time. Great. I'm disciplined now. No, it's a continued return because we backslide so easily. It's like, you know, as a human being, right, we backslide so easily. The, the next day you could be undisciplined again and then you could just keep backsliding versus continuing to emotionally accept again, emotionally say yes to myself, to yourself, to your higher self to say, this is for a greater cause. I am constricting myself in this moment. I'm constraining myself to the structure in this moment. And now it looks tight, but it's actually stronger. You know, you're constraining yourself. You're practicing your scales 
so that you can have the hand-eye core. Well, it's similar to musical instrument. I haven't, I haven't played piano for a while. Um, so when I went back to it, I'm like, I don't have the hand-eye coordination that I used to have. I backslid. But there are still some of the basics that I still have, which is after some practice, you have the basics. So I guess I only have a few minutes left for this video. So I'll, I'm just going to give you one more point then. So how do you... And let me give you some comfort and encouragement to say, well, George, I'm a hippie flower child. I am all about freedom. I don't like to constrain, constriction, constraint. That's bad spiritually, right? It's always so funny to me, like expansion. I think I, I, I talk to spiritual people and they're always about expansion, expansion, expansion. I'm like, but is constriction evil and expansion good? Is it always like that, black and white like that? Or is there more nuance to it? Yeah, there is more nuance. Because if you expand, like your heart, if it keeps expanding, <laughs> expanding, you're gonna, you're not gonna have have a life much longer. Expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction is the rhythm of life, right? Well, like look at nature as well. Flowers, you know, nature always expands, contracts, expands, contracts. The rhythm of the universe expands, contracts, expands, contracts. So no, don't be a, you know. Don't have that misconception that spirituality, good means always to expand your soul, your spirit. No, there's always, there's a time for both, right? There's a time for both. And yet, yes, perhaps in the more meta or deeper sense, there is a continued expansion of your learning, knowledge, freedom, and power. But the smaller day-to-day -day rhythm is expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. And so I invite you to look at your structuring for yourself as in service basically to that ultimate expansion of your power of your um, muscles right of your muscles of discipline and of your business because if you don't do the contraction structuring of yourself you know um yeah i, I don't know how, how please comment below if you could find a a more spiritual language at it because like i said Every time I talk to spiritual people, like, oh, always expansion, expansion, expansion. I'm like, no, isn't there? So please help me out here. What, what? How do you describe this spiritually? It's like it's always contraction is always bad. No, it's not always bad. Why? Why? Why always? Oh, that feels so contracted. Don't use that word as being always bad. It's like it's like, it's like you know, it's anyway. So I'll say one last thing, and then I'll and then I have to go. Um, look at each of the activities you're doing in the contracted state of structuring and discipline, all right? And um, linear, linearity is also not bad. I, I, list, I talk to holistic people, I'm like, oh, you're, you're so linear, George. Why, why is linear suddenly a bad word? Is that like linear is e evil and circular is always good? Cyclical is always good? Maybe, maybe, but is, is there no place for linearity? Is there no place for that? Is there no place for lines anymore in our world? Of course there is. Right, structure, lines, systems. It's not evil. It's it's in service to a greater expansion and in, in service to a greater cycle and a greater um, um, liberation, right, of your of your soul. So everything you do in in the structured practice. For example, let's say right now I'm creating content, right, this very moment. Literally, I'm making a video, creating content. I could say, oh, I'm gonna. I'm going to constrict myself and, oh, I got to make a content from 2 to 2.20 p.m. And it's so, so it's such a chore, right? This is why so many of us don't show up. We think of it as a chore. Well, I got to get this thing so I can get clients finally. No, I always think of everything I do, whether I'm creating content or I'm doing bookkeeping and working with numbers or doing some, solving some technological challenge. I'm thinking this very moment is a practice of some virtue some embodiment of some value. If I'm, if I'm creating content, I am embodying service, exploration, love, compassion, connection. If I'm doing bookkeeping, I'm embodying, I'm practicing the value of precision. I'm practicing um, accuracy. I'm practicing focus of mind, which is good. Everyone needs to practice that. I'm practicing curiosity about the numbers too. Like everything, if I'm solving a technological challenge or I'm doing some boring administrative task, oh, I'm practicing focus. I'm practicing consistency. I'm practicing the um, pride or the joy of um, 
what do you call it, cleanliness or, um, you know, sort of like um, regularity. I'm at a loss for words. I depend a little too much on chat GPT these days, but <laughs> so, but I can still laugh. <laughs> That's still human. So, uh, so help me out human beings. You can chat comment below. What are you, pra think about the things that you're structuring that you don't love naturally to do. Is it bookkeeping? Is it writing? Is it, um, I don't know, doing some administrative tasks that you avoid? What is it that you avoid? Maybe it's maybe you avoid talking about yourself and selling something, promoting something, announcing something. You just go limp. You just have all energy lost, lost, is lost when you think about promoting your, your offering online. Whatever it is you're avoiding that you know if you structured and did it and spent enough time, you would be more successful. Whatever it is you're avoiding, what, how might you reframe that so that you are practicing some deeper value or virtue that is in service to the expansion of your soul. That's the inquiry that I have for you. I really welcome you to comment below. Again, not because I want comments, uh, algorithm. I actually am really curious, what is it that you avoid in terms of structure? And then you know, do the homework if you'd like to below, comment on how, do, do it privately or comment below if you wanna uh, give others some inspiration and give me some ideas too. How might you reframe that thing you're avoiding creating structure for as a deeper practice that is in service to a greater beauty, a greater uh, creativity, authenticity, a greater feeling of love and joy in your life? Yeah, I'm really interested to, to see what you come up with. All right. Well, have a wonderful rest of your day. It's time for me. My structure, my time structure says, all right, George, you got five minutes left to do an Instagram uh, live. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'll see you later. All right. Take care. Bye for now.